the matter now? Tell me, Mama, what's the matter now? I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. When you see me coming, don't call my name. When you see me coming, don't call my name. I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. What's the matter now? Ain't nothing the matter. Tell me, Mama, what's the matter now? Tell you nothing's the matter. I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. When you see me coming, hush your window high. When you see me coming, hush your window high. Well, I'm going back to Texas. Sit on easy street Ooh, what's the matter now? Please tell me what's the matter now I'm going back to Texas Sit on easy street I got the Texas blues Blue as I can be Got the Texas blues I can be. I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. Ooh, what's the matter now? Please tell me what's the matter now. Got an old mule kicking in my stall. When you see me running, something's going on wrong. When you see me running, something's going on wrong. I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. That's Texas Easy Street Blues by Henry Thomas. Um, he only recorded uh, between 1927 and 1929, um, often known as Ragtime Texas. But he wrote uh, a great canon of songs that have been covered by people such as The Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, The Loving Spoonful, John Martin and lots of other people. It's a very simple blues in that it really only has two chords. And because Henry Thomas's picking style was very reminiscent, at least to me, of banjo picking, I've got the ukulele in a different tuning, a banjo tuning, one I use quite often on five string banjo, just to let me have those open strings and drones and pull-offs and hammer-ons. So let's get into that tuning. It's a tuning that in the banjo world is known as double C tuning, and that's because two of the strings are gonna be tuned to C. But first of all, let's tune our first string. So we've got D, G, B, E. We're gonna tune our highest string, our first string, down to D. I'm going to put my tuner on and hopefully you'll be able to see that as well. I'm going to tune that E. All the way down to D. So now I've got D, G, B, D. That's the same as the long four strings on my five string banjo in standard what they call G tuning. Now we're going to tune our lowest string, which is already at a D, down even more to a C. So I'm going to keep going down till we've got this lovely low C on the bottom. We're going to be playing in the key of C, so having a nice low C droning along underneath that is going to work great. So now we've got C, G, B, D. But I said this was called double C tuning, so we need another C. Our second string, which is currently a B, is going to go up a semitone to C. A little bit too far. There we go. Right, so now we've got low to high, C, G, another C, but an octave higher, and then on the top we've got a D, C, G, C, D. 
and in five string banjo playing that is known as double C tuning of course there will be a short fifth string halfway up the neck as well but we don't need that for this so that's fine so now we're in that tuning of course all of our chord shapes are going to be completely wrong but the good news is we really only need two shapes and they're very very simple this song isn't based on lots of flash left hand work it's based on keeping this nice rolling accompaniment going it sounds simple but it really isn't so let's find our two chords first of all then we'll just see how they fit into the song for our first chord the C chord we just need to put one finger on the second fret of our first string so we've got open 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 two that's the C chord the only other chord in the song is an F chord and that is open two open three so there's our two chords C and F so let's just strum through the song and see where those chords fit and then we'll work on the right hand and then look at some of the hammer-ons and pull-offs and little things that we can do to make this sound a whole lot more interesting than at first glance it might seem to be we've got this oh what's the matter now that first line is our c chord the second line we go to the f chord tell me mama what's the matter now and right at the end we go back to c now this third line in most 12 bar blues and lots of eight bar blues and things like that is where we go to the five chord i'm going back to texas sit on easy street there's no five chord in this song the vocal is sung almost like there's going to be one but there isn't one now i'm saying that there isn't one you could put one in there like i just did and you'll hear lots of cover versions where there is this extra chord but if you go back and listen to henry thomas's original recording he doesn't go for that third chord he goes back to the c chord and stays on the c chord there's an implied chord change by the melody of the vocal and also by which notes we pull off or hammer on within that chord but basically we've done the second line tell me mama what's the matter now gone back to the C then we stay there I'm going back to Texas sit on easy street and then we're already on that chord when you see me coming so basically it's C all the way through except for the second line of each verse where it's the F chord but then right at the end it goes back to the C tell me mama what's the matter now so it's usually on that last word or last syllable of that second line so that just seems ridiculously simple and you know you could go and just pick up a standard tune baritone and just play the chords of C and F you could pick up your GCEA tuned ukulele and just play the chords of C and F but there's something about the droning of the open strings and the pull-offs and this hand's rhythm that sort of brings the magic to the tune so let's try and get a pattern going with this hand to start with and do it with a regular pattern no hammer-ons and pull-offs you want something like this so what am I doing I'm pinching the outside two strings the one nearest the floor and the one nearest the ceiling and I'm only using two fingers and my thumb it's really important my thumb is going to be going back and forth between the low two, two strings to give this nice sort of rolling bass and then these two fingers are going to fill in the gaps so my second finger is going to deal with the first string my first finger is going to deal with the second string and my thumb is going to go back and forth between the lowest two and I'm going to pinch the outside two strings then I'm going to pinch the inside two strings with my thumb and first finger this time. So thumb and second finger, thumb and first finger. And then I'm going to go back to the outside pair and go thumb, finger, and then to the inside pair and go thumb, finger. Right, here's a little close-up of the finger pattern. So I'm, I'm, you would not play it like this, but I'm moving my fingers out of the way just to show you. It's thumb and second finger, thumb and index finger, thumb and second finger thumb and index finger outside inside outside inside and you can mess around with it 
You sometimes can pinch with two fingers, particularly if you want to put a pull off on your left hand. So let's put those chords underneath that. C chord. doing at the beginning, not just the hammer-ons and pull-offs, there's also a little timing issue, but for now just get used to doing that. We'll worry about that timing issue in a moment. Now the other thing I was doing was little pull-offs and hammer-ons, things like this. And you can more or less improvise those. So if I go pinch, Pinch, I sometimes have to break out of this pattern. If I want to hit that first string to hammer on and my pattern isn't playing that first string, then instead of going outside, inside, I can always go outside, move my thumb across. That's crucial that my thumb moves. But I could, I could still play the first string or I could play both of those strings instead of just the second string. Sometimes that's easier to do because you're not stopping your first finger playing the second string as it should. You're just adding a finger alongside it. Let me just slow that little one down as an example. I've got thumb. I'm just doing the thumb on its own here. So I play my thumb, then my thumb moves across and it plays that string, the third string at the same time as the first string and I add a note by pulling off. I don't pick that, that extra note. That is purely created by my left hand. That's the first bit. And then, and go back into my pattern again. And I'm actually not even bothering to hold that note down there. And I can take it off, put it back on again. When I'm on my F chord, I play that with my first and third fingers because this finger is going to come down on the second fret. I'm going to sometimes lift that one off and then do another pull off with that one like this. And these are really difficult things. Now, I'm not going to put tablature down for this one. And I know that I have a lot of people screaming, but the problem with it is I'm never doing exactly the same thing twice. This is the sort of music that it pays to learn by listening, copying, but also coming up with your own way of doing it. This is just the way I play it. You don't have to play it exactly like this. Take some ideas. Some of these pull-offs and hammer-ons are quite tricky to place on a particular beat because of the picking pattern. So don't put them on that beat. Put them where it feels natural for you. And what I'm trying to do really is go, ooh, madder now. I'm imitating the vocal. What's a madder? Just trying to get a rough idea of the shape of the vocal. And I'm not going to do it all the time, and I'm not going to do too much of it. Because when you're singing, you know, you're thinking about delivering the song, you don't want to mess up the rhythm by trying to put too many hammer-ons and pull-offs in. Now at the beginning I did a little instrumental break, and I actually went up, I went to the fifth fret, and the seventh fret. 
back to the fifth, and then open, and then back to my C chord here, like this. And all it was was fifth. Then I went to the seventh, but pulled off. And then a hammer on from the open to the second. But again, you can mess around with that and see where those notes will fit comfortably in the way you're picking it. And that's all it is. It just does that kind of thing over and over again. Never quite the same twice, but always the same kind of idea. There's one more thing that's a little bit tricky, and this is a lovely thing in a lot of very old blues, particularly solo performer blues. And that is, they don't stick to even numbers of bars, or even even numbers of beats in a bar. So when I'm playing this, I'm actually adding a bar of two, and that is what was happening on Henry Thomas's version. Right, I'm gonna play the first verse twice now. Once, all nice and square, four beats in a bar. The second time, I'm gonna add the two extra beats before I'm going back to Texas. See if you can hear the difference. Ooh, what's the matter now? Tell me, mama, what's the matter now? I'm going back to Texas, sit on easy street. That was all nice and square. Here's the extra bit. Ooh, what's the matter now? Tell me, mama, what's the matter now? Going back to Texas, sit on easy street. It just gives me a little bit extra breathing time before that last line. But you know what? You can play as many beats as you want there. Ooh, what's the matter now? Tell me, mama, what's the matter now? I'm going back to Texas, sit on his street. And because there's no chord change in that one, you don't have to worry about where you would fit that chord change around. You just keep playing on that C chord. And maybe try and echo the vocal, sit on easy, when you're doing that sit on easy street bit with some pull-offs and hammer-ons. Sit on easy street, something like that. It's a really beautiful song. If you're gonna play it with a band, you'd probably square it off and not add those extra beats, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but I quite like these little quirks. You don't have to play any of the verses quite like any of the other verses. I've added a link below to Henry Thomas's original recording of this for you to have a listen to. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.